Hi, my name is Martin Moon, and in this video I'm going to take a classic FM quiz. The quiz is titled, Not Even Your Music Teacher Will Pass This Impossible Theory Quiz. I have not seen the contents of this quiz before, and this will be my first time taking the quiz. So let's begin. Twenty twenty was the year of cancelled exams. We're here to put that right. But the music theory test specifically devised to flummox and torment. If you've clicked on this quiz for an easy challenge, exit now. This music theory test has been expertly designed to be an absolute head scratcher, and it's not for the faint hearted. Proceed with caution. Question one. If a piece is marked long sum, how would you play it? I believe Longsam may be a German word. I'd say slowly. That's my gut instinct. And the style of a march doesn't ring a bell. Delicately, that would be like delicato. Energetically would be energico. So I, I go with, I go slowly. Okay, correct. Next question, question two of 14. In a harmonic analysis of this Bach chorale, how would you describe the circled chord? So let's see what key we're in here. This is a one chord, C major one. C major one, C major one, six, C major one, G major five, passing tone A, E minor three, A minor six, passing tone B to D major 5, which is a secondary dominant 5 of 5. Going, resolving to 5 here with the 7th here, but that 7th not circled, only the 5 chord here. So that's an important difference that the C is not circled. Although that red line, the, the red line is touching that C, it's not around that C. So this is a G major 5 and then A minor 6 with the deceptive cadence. Notice how uh, the doubling of this voice is here. This B goes down to A, G goes up to A, G goes down to E, G goes up to C. That's an interesting uh, way the voices go from five to six. But anyways, to answer the question here, how would you describe the circle chord? This is a five of five, and there is no five of five. They have a five, seven of five, which is the closest answer. I would choose definitely not a six seven of three. Six seven of three that would be six that would be an E minor, an E minor <laughs> six seven that would be like uh six seven. Just, I've never seen that before. So a five seven or five, yeah, six seven of three, that'd be like an E minor, then the six of E minor would be C, and that'd be C E G, but then a six seven C E G B flat, and there's no C E G or B flat, except for the C here. <clears throat> and definitely not a seven chord, major seven chord. Definitely not a one chord, so I'd say five, seven of five, but again. I notice here that this line, this red line isn't around that C. It should be around that C, but this is the closest answer. So I'll choose five, seven, or five, final answer. Correct. Which period did Alessandro Scarlatti compose in? Okay, so there's Domenico Scarlatti and Alessandro Scarlatti and yeah, it's not clear which one is the father, which one is the son, or, or exactly how they're related. It's I'd say I want to say Renaissance, and perhaps we look at the music here for a clue. The see note heads with stems. 
Definitely not classical, definitely not romantic. It's either Baroque or Renaissance. It's like 50-50, guess. I'm going to guess that Alessandro Scarlatti was the father of Domenico Scarlatti, or at least lived before Domenico Scarlatti. And, but just because Alessandro Scarlatti may have lived before Domenico, Domenico Scarlatti doesn't necessarily mean he may be a Renaissance composer. See if there's any uh, time signature listed here. I don't see any bar lines. And the artwork, I may be able to maybe have an informed guess based on the artwork, but I'm. Again, it's uh, I'm not sure what what style of of painting that would be. It's Renaissance or Baroque. I'm going to go for Renaissance. <laughs> Mostly guessing. Uh, okay, let's oh, let's choose Renaissance. Oh, it's Baroque. Okay, it's Baroque. How would you describe the time signature 128? Uh, it's a compound meter. So the pulse is uh, dotted quarter notes, and a compound meter means the pulse is divided into three equal parts. So the dotted quarter note, that's divided into eighth notes. So I would say that's a compound meter. A simple meter, on the other hand, is when the meters, when the pulse is divided into two equal parts, like a quarter note in a 4-4 meter. A quarter note would be divided into two equal parts, and each part would be an eighth note. And the eighth note would half a beat. If something is more smorzando, how would you play it? Smorzando means dying away. And I I said that even before looking at the the answers, so I'm gonna choose dying away. Solemnly, no. Smoothly, no. Pastoral in a pastoral style, no. Would be dying away. Name the scale. F sharp melodic minor. So it's F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, F sharp, that's melodic minor ascending, and then descending is F sharp natural minor. And there's a tradition when the scale is played ascending for a melodic minor scale. It's the melodic minor scale, and when it's descending, the natural minor scale is used. So I'm going to say F sharp melodic minor. And the other choices don't come as close. Only other possible answer would be F sharp natural minor because if if one is looking at this, then this is F sharp natural minor, but the totality of this in the tradition of ascending being melodic and descending being natural, this is F sharp melodic minor. Another piece of Bach chorale analysis. How would you describe the circle chord? So let's see what key we're in here. It resolves to C major here, the five, seven to one. So this is starting on E major. That would be like a five of six. Resolving to six. Now this, this note is G sharp because this G sharp is carried over here. So this is uh, five of six. And again, this red line it's not exactly clear if this red line is including D or not, because then that changes the identity of the chord. 
It's either a 5, 7 of 6 or 5 of 6. And this resolves, this is um, resolving to a deceptive cadence. So this goes to, to F major 4. So this is 5, double 6, never heard of that. 3. Oh, wait, 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 there's a bar line. There's a bar line hidden under here and the meter is probably something like three, four, I'd say. Three, four based on the pulse and then the division of the pulse, the beaming of these eighth notes. So this G sharp isn't carried over because this red line here is covering the bar line. You can see a part of the bar line there, but this note is actually G natural. And it's tricky because there's no um, there's no like friendly reminder. Accidental will say, "Hey, this is not a mistake. It's actually G natural, not G sharp." So this is this changes the 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 harmony, the, the analysis. So this would be E minor three, E minor three going to F major four. Very logical progression here. And going E minor three going to F major four is not a deceptive cadence most in, in especially in this context because usually four will go to five there's a sort of this interruption here with a, taking a detour to uh, d minor here then going to five seven and resolving one or you can say this is an interruption depending on on the interpretation i'd have to look closer into this uh, to have a more uh, uh, more a, a more a better opinion Better analysis. But in the case of this chord here, this would be E minor three, five double six, no, five seven of major three, no, one of <laughs> minor three, no, this is just my, this three, E minor three. Correct. Question eight of 14. What's the relative minor of this key? So we don't even have to look at this notes, these notes. So we just look at the key signature. This is E major, the relative minor is C sharp minor. So this here is not really necessary at all. Just look at the key signature. And the trick to identify the key when you see sharps is to look at the last sharp and go up half a step. So the last sharp here is D sharp, you go up half a step, that's E. So the key is E major. Then to find the relative minor, you either go to the sixth scale degree of E major, which is maybe why they have this here, but I do a different way, I go three half steps down from E. So E, D sharp, D natural, C sharp, and the relative minor of E major is C sharp. Final answer. Question nine of 14, which of these Italian music terms have we made up? Squillo, haven't heard of that. Verismo, I've may have heard of that. Pastaccio. It almost sounds like pistachio. I haven't heard of pasticcio. Crostini, I've not heard of. <laughs> see if we can do analysis with, um, with like the derivations of the words like like pastoral, maybe, or for pasticcio, verismo, like ver, which means truth. I think it's derived from truth, like verify, verily, veritas. Faustini. I've never seen that as a musical term. Squillo. Never heard of that. And especially. A musical term, I don't know. Showing uh, trom people playing trombones, like people playing trombone here. It may be these terms may have be related to playing the trombone. So I, I I've never played the trombone, so. Costini, Pasticcio, Verissimo, Squillo. Squillo almost sounds like squeal.
Faustini, that could be real. Pasticcio could be real. Verismo could be real. Squilo. I'm going to take a guess. I'll go with Squilo. Crostini, okay. What is the correct time signature for this bar? This is question 10 of 14, Sacrificial Dance. I'm thinking of this be from Rite of Spring by Stravinsky. any case and look at the note and rest values here. So 16th note, 16th notes for this chord and a 16th rest. So and it's all a motive. So it's like a three and a two. So if this is two, we can sort of extrapolate this data here. This is 216, and we can say this is 316, but it could be like a trick question though, <laughs> to look at other possibilities and answers. So logically this would be 316 because this is 216 with a 16th rest and a 16th accord made up of 16th notes. So this would be 316, definitely not 3, 4, Definitely not. There's no core note pulse. Let's see here. Five eight. No, there would be that the eighth notes would be an on the level of eighth notes. These are on the level of sixteenth notes. Twelve eight. No. So I'd say three sixteen here. The traditional song Scarborough Fair is based around which musical mode? Okay. I actually wrote a study look at this piece in a in the in a book for a class and teacher for intermediate piano. It's like Dorian. Da, 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 da. So Dorian is when there's a natural minor scale, but the sixth is raised. So in other words, it's, you can take the major scale and lower the third, and that would be Dorian. So this is in C sharp, you can say C sharp, C sharp major, lower the third, which is E sharp, that would be E natural. So C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp. Definitely not Lydian, definitely not Mixolydian, not Phrygian. It's going up a whole step to E flat minor or D sharp minor. That's a beautiful instrument. You should ask what instrument is that? <laughs> that would be even harder. <laughs> so I'm not sure. I don't, I don't have to guess what instrument that would be. Going with the E minor. So to double check the answers, should be a C natural here. Yeah, so Dorian is taking the major scale and lowering the third. 
So there should be a C sharp. Oh, wait, 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 wait. It's lowering the third and the seventh. So Dorian is when you take a major scale and you lower the third and the seventh. Natural minor is when you lower the third, sixth, and seventh of the major scale. In any case, Lydian makes Lydian Phrygian you know, way off from uh, the, these, the answer. So I'm going to say Dorian. So, so for the E, Dorian scale would be E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. And that would be Dorian. Question 12 and 14. What's the relative major of this key? So this is G natural minor, and that would be B flat major. That's a really easy question. And this quiz is called Not Even a Music Teacher Will Pass This Impossible Theory Quiz. This is a really easy question. What's the relative major of this key? And this G natural minor scale, relative major, B flat major. C major, no. A flat major, no. F major, no. It's be B flat major. Question 13 or 14, spot another one of our fake Italian music terms and they show people playing the cello. Coda, that's a real Italian music term. Farsa, have not seen in music. Don't recall seeing that in music. Appendiabiti, haven't seen that in music either. Moso. Yes, I've seen that. It means motion, like più moso, more motion, or meno moso, less motion. So it's either farsa or appendiabiti. Appendiabiti sounds like appendix, like like an appendix in a book. And it's it's a 50-50 guess between Farsa and Appendia Bitti. I'll say Appendia Bitti. And I guess correctly. Question 14 or 14, fill in the gap. The oboe has a range of approximately how many octaves? Two and a half octaves, one and a half, three and a half, or two. Thank you. Think one eight. Played chamber music with oboists. I'm trying to recall the repertoire they played. There's one. The, the Vinicky Trio for oboe, horn, and piano, I believe. And there's a theme at the beginning goes So that's just I don't think it's one and a half. I think the oboe is it's a much greater range than that. Could be three and a half. But in, in score order, there's the flutes, then the oboes, and the 
clarinets, I believe. It's flute. So flute, clarinet, oboe, or flute. I know the flute is piccolo, then flute, then clarinet and oboe, or flute, oboe, clarinet. It's a flute, oboe, clarinet. Clarinet can can play pretty low. Two and a half, perhaps three and a half. Think of three and a half. Da, 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 da. It's hard to hear it in oboe with that range. <clears throat> with three and a half. Two seems a little bit small. Just the oboe is such a beautiful instrument. I can't, just can't imagine the oboe just having a range of two octaves. I'd say two and a half. Three and a half again. Tira, tira, one octave. Da, di, da, di, da. And then the next higher up from that, that would be three, and then another half an octave. That that's a really really big range for an oboe. I think I played the Schumann violin sonata for oboe. I don't recall the oboe the range of an oboe going three and a half octaves, maybe two and a half. That seems realistic. That seems closer than three and a half. One and a half just seems too short for oboe. The oboe is such a beautiful instrument. Just one and a half octaves just doesn't feel right. Two octaves, that seems a little bit closer, but still I feel that oboe is the range of oboe going to be bigger than two octaves. It just seems so limited. Three and a half just seems too much. Da, da. That's two octaves. Three octaves, and then going up to like E or so for, for half an octave. That's just that's just going to the range of like almost like piccolo. Da, da, da. Or like flutes. I'd say by process of elimination, I'm gonna go with two and a half. And notice they have one and a half, two, two and a half, but they don't have three. They jump up to three and a half. And three and a half just seems, may, may be though, it could be possible. I don't know all the, the effects. Like for flute, they have flautando. For oboe, I'm not sure there could be, it could be possible though. That's if there's effects for the oboe that can be done to play three and a half octaves for the oboe. So I'm gonna say either, it's either two and a half octaves or three and a half octaves. But three and a half octaves for an oboe would be getting to the range of the flutes and almost the piccolo I'd say. And the oboe has such a focused sound. It's the oboe is that tunes the orchestra that has such a stable tone that oboe, when, if you go to a live, uh, when a live symphony, they when they tune the orchestra, the oboe is, begins with the A. Unless they're playing a piano concerto, then the tuning is based on the A, A4 on the piano. I believe, and for the oboe, it's when the, when there's no soloist playing with the orchestra, then the orchestra tunes based 
on the oboe is playing the A. It's such a stable, the pitch is stable and it's the sound is really focused. So would oboes be able to have such a focused sound playing for three and a half octaves? I know it's easier, I believe when the range is lower, it's easier for the oboe to play. When the range is higher, it's much harder for the oboes to play. And, and I think it's conversely for the clarinetist. It's harder for a clarinetist to play in the low range and it's easier for a clarinetist to play in the high range. So for oboes to play three and a half octaves above the lowest note of the range would be really high and requires such a focused sound. It's that's what would be really hard to do, I think. I don't I haven't I haven't played the oboe, so I'm just guessing. But I've taken an orchestration class uh, that was about eight years ago. And in orchestration class, students had to memorize the range of the instruments. So the range of the oboe, it, it, the exact range of the oboe eludes me. I'm gonna go with two and a half. Three and a half just seems way too big of a range. One and a half seems too small of a range. Two seems close, but still is a little bit, it's almost like demeaning to the instrument. It's like the oboe can only play two octaves. It just doesn't make sense. Two octaves from oboe, it just, it's just, I'd say the oboe should, Two and a half seems a great, makes more sense for an oboe. Just two octaves seems a little bit too small. Three and a half seems way too big, especially to play it. Three and a half octaves above the lowest note of the oboe. That's, that would be, seems to be really, really difficult to do. So I'm going to go with two and a half, final answer. Yes! <laughs> Okay, so a process of elimination, I was able to guesstimate that answer for the oboe, the last question. Thank you, Luciano Pavarotti. Twelve out of fourteen. You've only gone and done the impossible. Your music theory knowledge is unmatched. Brava. And that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching.